Now, if you're expecting the usual mix of old vehicles, museums, castles and views, this might not be quite the video for you. However, if you're into Celtic festivals, it could be right up your street. Welcome to episode 13 of Midlander in the Mountains. Run VT! A hundred and thirty four subscribers. Thank you to each and every one of you and thank you for joining me. Today we are going to be visiting a place called Schwarzenbach which is just off the A2 Autobahn about an hour's drive south of Vienna and I do seem to find myself saying that an awful lot. Anyway today is a celebration of all things Celtic so without further ado I'm going to crack on with the film. <laughs> And so it was that a Saturday in the middle of June found me in a field next door to an open air Celtic museum located above the small municipality of Schwarzenbach in Lower Austria. And here every year they gather to hold an event that is known as Keltenfest. As you can see, there's plenty for all the family and these ladies had even turned up from Ukraine to celebrate. Oh, and there's the fire, more of that later. As well as the usual mix of traders with and plenty of food and drink, there are shows held throughout the day. So we'll start with a bit of live music then. Irish music seems to be extremely popular, as demonstrated here by the Flatland Rovers. Uh, it made me feel somewhat homesick, maybe because it was in English, not because I'm Irish. Anyway, I soon found myself wandering up the hill via the nicest alpaca house I've ever seen to the highest point of the site, where there stands a very uncounted building indeed. However, it gives the site a place to house a cafe, and the sign at the bottom of the tower tells you it was a pretty big financial collaboration. I said no mountains, but I couldn't resist, could I? Over there is the Schneeberg and the Semmering area where I live. <laughs> and behind me, over there, is Hungary. It's worth a climb. Anyway, back to all things Celtic and the open air museum itself. The buildings are beautiful recreations and during Keltenfest, people are actually living here. This is a recreation of a Celtic handworker's house and if you look closely at the ceiling, you'll see there are no nails, but just wooden spigots. This is not a theme park, it is a real pucker. Celtic Museum. And sitting behind a table of authentic replica Celtic jewellery, I got my first break for an interview. So, what is your name? Kathy. Kathy. Okay. Katerina. 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 What's your name? It's Craig. It's great. great. All right, lovely. Where are you from in Austria? Uh, Eisenstadt. That's about half an hour, about five minutes drive from here. And what attracted you to getting involved in Celtic history? Because, I mean, this isn't sort of a part-time hobby, is it? Because you've got to have the clothes and your children have got all the clothes and you are actually sleeping over there in that, in that, in that. Yes, uh, true. <laughs> right. So this is pretty authentic, what you're doing. Well, it's a hobby. Yeah. And it's not every weekend, like. But yeah, um, my dad is got involved before me and I said, hey, it's really cool, I want to do that too, I want to try and see how, what it's like, and I liked it first day. Yeah. And do you like it too? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think you enjoy it here, don't you? I do think you enjoy it here, don't you? 
thanks ever so much for talking to me. Okay then. Yeah. While admiring Catty's father's shield display, he gave me a display of a different kind, a warrior stance, and then this. Tell me about the knife. <coughs> the knife, uh, the original is in Bungland, in the Leitergebirge, and it was in a grave, and I watched it similar to the original. So this is based on a find on a from... Find from Burgenland. Absolutely superb. Thank you. I then got another great interview, and if you're watching Matt, please do drop me an email. Um. Okay, so this is Matthew, and I've stopped him and asked him if I could <laughs> ask him about what he's wearing today. And uh, well, it's just absolutely superb. So Matthew, I believe I'm right in saying this uh, outfit that you've got on today is Germanic, and it's from around about 50 years BC, something like that? Something like that. Right, okay. And as we just discussed off camera, the Celts, they were nomadic, but they were kind of a mixture, weren't they? That there was of many cultures. Yeah, and this is particularly Germanic, what you're wearing here. Uh, Teutonic. Teutonic, okay. And what specifically is Teutonic? Teutonic is uh, uh, Germanic influence with the German, uh, with the, the Nordic. So it's Nordic influences coming down, down into what we now call Germany. Germany, Prussian. The Prussian even uh, uh, Perman or uh, or uh, today is uh, West uh, North East Germany. Okay. Can you say? Or Poland. Yeah. Around. So you're talking dancing or Prussia coming down into Germany. And this chainmail's quite special, isn't it? You've got two types on here. Now in your hat, tell us about what that Train, how that chainmail differs from what you're wearing? That's a, old, uh, a single band mail, can you say? That's that's the the, the early one, early type of, of chainmail was the Romans are used. The later ones are that the riveted. Riveted every single link, every second single link was riveted. And presumably that is much stronger. Than much much stronger. You see, it's, a, 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 it's a, like a thread. I think it's red, but that's a, a, a flat ring. Would an archer's arrow be able to pierce that? Uh, this had a bit of trouble, but it, it came through when some links are damaged, like the lower part, like here. Okay. But in this one, the arrows go through. It's only a, a, a cutting a, a safety. Um, uh, Daggers and swords and Sword that and sort of thing yes yeah okay now this pouch over here would normally contain what uh a little piece of butter for your your germanic style hair <laughs> hair style <laughs> can you say you have a little little you some little clamp in it for uh, some nose picks or something like that or even a can Okay. But the Germanic look very, very authentic of his his hairwear, you can say. Okay, so they had their own hairstyles. Mm -hmm. They were quite vain, they carried their own butter in order to style their hair and presumably a comb as well. Mm -hmm. Oh fantastic. And this other pouch here, that's for money. I it's only it. for money. And finally, could you just tell me a little bit about this? Because this is quite a formidable weapon, isn't it? <laughs> a long spear against horsemen like that. Okay. For the normal foot soldier. And your primary enemy as a Celt from that time would have presumably been the Romans. The Romans or other tribes there trying to conquer the land. Okay, so you've got into tribal wars mm -hmm. and you've also got the invasion the of the Romans. The Romans. <laughs> so, so the Celts got to be fairly kitted out for war at all times really. Every time. Really.
Well, that's absolutely superb. Matthew, thank you so much for your time. Thank no you. Problem. You're welcome. Cheers. Now when I got back down to the main field, things were starting to get seriously quite busy and I noticed that there were people walking around with war paint on. Now those who are in red are Boya and those who are in blue are Norica and that's some people putting up a wicker basket that looks like it's had the bottom knocked out of it because it has. Oh and by the way, that's Tony, fine figure of a man and loads of fun. <laughs> We were then treated to our first dose of Celtic nobility with a small parade, which was immediately followed by a bit of crowd warming up, shall we say. We begrüßen euch zu den Highland Games. Then our wonderful compare greeted everybody and introduced the two teams, which I think I've already done, who were going to fight like hell over that, the Celtic Cup. A most popular team, I feel. And es freuen sich ganz besonders. Der Stamm der Boya. And then commenced lots and lots of very fun games. The teams pulling their own members along on posts. Auf die Plätze. Kelten los. Then pulling members of the audience along on posts. And the ladies were also welcome. Then followed some spear throwing. Not quite. And a make yourself dizzy version of the sack race. The crowd were loving it and so was I. And it couldn't possibly be Celtic games without throwing a bit of wood. And then followed a slalom, which I never really got to the bottom of. Then Tony, who we've already met in red, tried his best to stay inside some rope, while Archie in the blue tried his best to push him out. And succeeded. Eventually, that is. But as you could see, the camaraderie was top class and everything was very, very friendly. Until, that is, a young kid threw a cabbage and then all hell broke loose. Thank <laughs> you. 
penultimate game was Tug of War. I haven't quite done yet. <laughs> This is the Celtic Games and this is Austria, you know, so it always finishes off with a damn good drink. Bottoms up. And Tony tried his best. But in the end, it was a win for Norica. Well done. Super. Then, when the live music resumed, some serious drinking and partying began. And Selfish Murphy, who were performing here, taught the amateur filmmaker to always make sure that he keeps his sound levels on manual. But that's another story. Please forgive me. Believe you me, the acoustics were better than that. I even got bounced about a bit for authenticity. <laughs> we were then treated to music of a very different kind with the return of the Celtic bagpipes. The Celts being attributed to their spread across Europe. Anyway, the Celtic aristocracy lined up along with a few local dignitaries and then people began flooding in from everywhere. <laughs> Torches were distributed to the great and the good and the anticipation began to build. <laughs> Now at this point folks, I am going to take a very small intermission. The reason being is, what comes next is without doubt the absolute pinnacle of Keltenfest. And whilst I could have over edited it and even played some Celtic music, that would not have done the evening justice, not considering the amount of effort that the people put in to this particular event. It's not just a show. It means something. So please forgive the fact I was walking backwards and doing everything handheld, because now was the time to just film it as it happened. This is the fire. Enjoy. Fire! Fire! Thank <laughs> you. 
Then, after saying another quick hello to my Ukrainian friends, the party resumed. Now this was the Mahomes, an Irish punk rock band by their own admission, and they really were this loud. Anyway, it was getting late, and after 12 hours filming, I decided that I would let these people continue to party well into the night. Now I'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you to Karina Baranek, the organisers for letting me make this film, and everybody that was quite happy to stand in front of the camera for me. Thank you very, very, very much. This was Von Hewitt Films. Will I be back next year? Yeah, damn right I will. See you there. Until next time, ta-da.